What's going on everybody? Nice, beautiful morning outside. Coffee. It's first thing in the morning, well, for me. So it's a good time to talk about lighting stuff on fire. Whatever do I mean? Well, we're going to take pieces of wood, we're gonna light them on fire. Uh, we're gonna make them look like this. It's gonna be awesome. I'm hoping to make this video a little shorter than the last video. The last video, I talked about wood selection. I talked a little bit about the species you wanna look for when you're doing this uh, Shusugi Bon inspired burn and brush technique that I use. So this is going to be three or four or maybe five videos that's gonna talk about the whole process that I go through and it's gonna be in detail. If you wanna see some of my work, go check out my Instagram page, at Inspire Woodcraft, and you can see uh, all the different things there that I've done over, say, the last year that's led me to this. I always get a lot of questions, and so this is hopefully going to answer a lot of those questions. All right, so let's get started. So let's talk about the first couple of things. Obviously, we need flame. I use one of these. Striker, and one of these. A weed torch, or a roofing torch, depends on uh, where you are and who you ask and what you call it. This is a propane tank. If you haven't seen a propane tank before, this is gonna be too advanced for you. This is what I primarily use. I only use this guy when I'm doing large batches, the wall siding and stuff like that that I've done in the past. This is what I'm gonna use because I'm gonna get a larger volume at one time. You don't wanna use this for the little guys, it'll just it'll just disintegrate. This guy, I use it all the time. Next time I go to the store, I'm thinking about getting map gas. So it looks just like this, but it has a yellow bottle. And map gas is hotter than propane. My theory is that maybe it'll help my jaw go a little bit quicker for now. I use propane and for today's purposes, I think this is what we're gonna use. So this is usually what I set up against when I torch something. Uh, I kinda just lean it up against here like this and then what I'll do is I'll just kinda take the flame and I'll just kinda run up and down uh, like so. I don't really worry about getting this too much burnt uh, because I don't, well I care about this piece of plywood but um, it's not gonna get that charred even if it does get burnt so it's not gonna be a problem. So I guess my point is you wanna make sure that you're doing all this on a surface. Um, Concrete without sawdust is probably preferred, but concrete nonetheless. That being said, I'm probably uh, obligated somehow to say safety first, right? So um, please don't burn anything down that's not supposed to be burnt down. Just don't burn anything down. Um, all we're trying to do here is we're just trying to scorch this piece of wood so we can make something really awesome out of it. And, and it would suck if something bad happened and you lit your garage on fire or something else or yourself or, I don't know, anything uh, because you weren't careful. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Just be safe out there and have fun because this is actually a ton of work, but it's actually really fun and really rewarding too. So just be safe. So I'm just going to start at the bottom and we're going to lightly color it. This is basically the first stages. And actually, while I think about it, there's a couple different ways of burning. What I mean is, a lot of times what you'll see, what's, what's claimed as uh, Shusugi Bon is a, what I call surface burn. I do use that technique, but very rarely. It's a lot easier than all this mess that we're going through right now. But all you're doing essentially is you're just lightly coloring the soft spring wood. And that's a technique that is widely used. Uh, I've even seen a few people uh, take and color that afterwards and then sand some of it down and everything. To me, that sounds like just as much work as we're doing here. When do I use which one? This gets the most dramatic results. When you compare this to one of the other surface burns, you'll notice some really big differences. This, this has a tendency to be way more vibrant and the reason is, is because in this technique we're actually coloring the soft spring wood that we dug back up underneath that char and it leaves the hardened grains black or dark brown and that gives you that really pretty contrast. And when you do a surface burn, when you go back and you color, you're actually coloring the grain which isn't going to take your stain or your dye or what have you uh, as well as the soft spring wood in between the grain. So that's kind of the difference. They both work. Now personally I don't like to use the surface burn if I don't have to. The reason is because it's really difficult to get an even burn across the whole thing and you end up getting hot spots and dark spots and well let me show you. Alright let's see if I can show you guys this. 
We're gonna do the same thing that we did with this little guy, but instead, we're gonna just try and do it as evenly as possible. So as you can see, it's hard not to make it blotchy. So I'm gonna take nice, even strokes. I'm gonna hold the flame as much as I can at the same distance from the wood the entire time. Here's one thing I like to do. I like to kind of just zip in and zip out. So see, a little bit of a light spot here, I can kind of come in. Uh, like I say though, you gotta be careful because if it decides it's a little bit too much heat, it's gonna darken up the green itself and then you're gonna have a problem. Now, I think this is really pretty the way it is and, and to be fair, we actually did a pretty good job. I see a little bit of a hot spot here and a little bit of a hot spot there, but on the fly, that's really not that bad. Now, normally I don't make such an effort to get this super pretty beforehand. I just start burning. Let's go to the next step. Actually, let's we'll get rid of that. I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. We got a nice little knot here, so that'll help too. This is usually what I do. All I'm really doing is heating the wood up and it kind of prepares it for the next pass, the next couple passes, which is where we're gonna get a little darker. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hold our heat on there a little bit longer and take a little bit slower passes. This is gonna start heating up the actual grain, which is what we're trying to do. Now some areas are gonna be a little more stubborn than others. Knots, for example, which I'll, we'll take a look at in a second. A lot of times you have to hold the heat there for a while. The soft springwood is always gonna burn uh, faster, deeper than the hard grain. I think for video purposes, this is good enough. So as you can see, it has kind of a sheen to it. We've darkened not just the softwood, but we've actually darkened the rings as well. And those rings are gonna stay black, and this is what's actually gonna come out. Now, we're not gonna do that today. Again, that's gonna be for another video, but this is essentially what I go for. You don't need to char this and make it look like a piece of firewood. If you're gonna brush this back out, you're good enough to just blacken it. As soon as those turn black, they're not gonna unblack. They're just, they're gonna stay right where they're at, but it means you're not gonna have to work so hard to dig this out. All right, so now we're gonna try and talk a little bit about end grain. There's a couple different things you can do with end grain. You can completely scorch all this and you can come back and you can brush out in between the grain, or you can just do a surface burn on this. Now, end grain burns a lot different than the face grain. I like to just, just kind of kiss this with the flame. So I like to kind of just char the edges first real quick, and then I like to just make passes. Now, this is gonna be a little awkward with the camera set up right next to my arm where I don't have movement. But as you can see, we're just kind of drawing it on there. Uh, this, just like I said before, when all you're doing is the soft part, it's very easy to get blotchiness. And that might be about as good as this piece is gonna get before we start over burning it. You can see a little bit of a hot spot right here and that just means that this is a little darker. It got hotter than that part. The problem is we can kind of come in here and just sneak up on it a little bit and fill in some of that stuff. This piece right here, this is gonna be hard to do. Kind of get a circular motion going on, but now see, I've tried to fill in this piece but instead I made the whole thing dark. So other than that, it works just like everything else. If you come through now, you can just kind of fill in the rest of this. And there you go. Now, if you can see, there's a bunch of lines that 
kind of run diagonal through here. That's saw mark. You can get away with a lot cleaner, nicer burn if you don't have those saw marks. Now the last thing we're gonna talk about real quick is we're not only burning the back side of the grain, we're also burning these knots. So I'm gonna do this front and back so we can see the difference. You can see how when I char around this and I heat up around the outside, you see how the knot is the last thing to go. What you have to keep in mind is that the grain is always the last thing to burn. Well, the knots are, it's a part of the grain, but it's a more concentrated area. So that's why they're gonna take a little bit longer. See how the heat just goes right around there. In fact, you won't be able to see it on camera, I, I don't think, but it's actually pulling out a little bit of moisture or sap that's actually inside that knot. So there we go. We're gonna just kind of dance around it until we can char it up. On really tough knots, they're gonna actually, you're gonna cook the outside right here. <laughs> and that's all right. Let's start on this side. Now what's really funny is you can see on the outside of the tree, remember this is the outside rings, how much quicker those knots actually will heat up. I have no idea why that is. I don't know that I care enough to look into it. If I stumble across it, I will do my best to spread the information. Now I'm actually gonna keep charring this a little bit because I do wanna bring up one more thing. I'm just cooking it until it won't take any more flame. So what's interesting about burning this is so when you burn deep enough, you're actually burning this to a point where it's actually fairly fire retardant. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of this technique is that it can be used for so many different things. So now we're getting a really nice charcoal-y looking deal to it. It's not, some people it's not their thing. Uh, I really think it's it can be used in the right spot. It can be really pretty because the grain still shows through, but you get that amazing texture. Uh, it, it brings a whole new life to the piece of wood. As you go, you'll start to see it actually take shape. All right, that's enough of that. I don't even know how much of this is actually showing up on film. There we go. Now, ironically, this can get hot spots too. You see how it's there's a sheen to this until you get to right up there in the corner and it flattens out and that's probably because I overheated it so um, it's not a big deal if I was to use this piece first I would take an old paintbrush that's nice and soft and I would just brush this off and it will even out the color and when you clear coat that uh, if that's what you wanted to do you clear coat that it's gonna actually all even out that color anyways it's not that big of a deal uh, there we go we have a nice surface burn, then we went into actually blackening the whole surface without over burning it and turning it into that gator look. And then we took a piece and uh, we discovered what happens when you do not. And we took and we fully charred a piece. And then of course we did a only surface burn, uh, which got us this. And this piece, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually fond of this piece. I think this turned out really well. Uh, so what I'd like to do is in another video, I would like to look at the difference between coloring this one with just a surface burn, brushing this one and coloring it, and then putting clear coat on this one. Now I'm gonna save that for another video. Like I've said before, it's just gonna take too long to do one video that explains all this. My wife just walked out. Uh, filming from home is kind of interesting because there's always these little interruptions, so uh, that's been a challenge. Uh, as I get better with the video, these videos will get a little bit better and I'll understand uh, where I can put the camera to make the most out of it. So anyways, enough of me rambling. As usual, I go on and on about absolutely nothing. That was today's video. We got some burning techniques out of the way. Oh, we also did our end grain. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, if I didn't explain something well enough, leave me a comment and, uh, and we'll go from there. Hit subscribe and you'll be able to get notified when I release the other videos. <clears throat> like I say, we're going to go into the coloring process. We're actually going to go into brushing. Brushing will probably be next, of course, because that's the next uh, step. And if you didn't see the video that I released about wood selection, I would definitely check that out. I'll leave a link for it down below uh, because that'll get you to where you can actually start burning this stuff and you'll know ahead of time how to pick out things based on what you want to accomplish when you burn. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching and uh, I will talk to you guys next time.